Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here and welcome to Toby's Tutorial episode number 0701, Football, uh, where I'm going to teach you how to complete this 3D model of the football. Now, this challenge comes from the Too Tall Toby YouTube channel. If we go to the section called 3D Modeling Practice, we can see that this is a playlist of a bunch of different practice models where I challenge you to take a 2D print and turn it into a 3D model as quickly as possible. So today, we're gonna take a look at this one, Model Monday Replay 0701 Football, and I'm gonna show you how to turn this 2D print into a 3D model. Ow. So the sponsor for today's episode of Toby's Tutorial is Solidbox, and I think they are a perfect sponsor for this type of content because the challenge that I put out to you in these videos is to create this 3D model from a 2D sketch as quickly as possible. And one thing that's definitely gonna help you with creating 3D models as quickly as possible is having the appropriate hardware to accomplish that task. And that's what the team over at Solidbox will help you do. Whether you need a new desktop or a new laptop, they're gonna help you pick out the appropriate specs, the appropriate hardware, but they're also gonna go through and benchmark and configure that system so that it's ready to go in a professional CAD and CAM environment as soon as it gets to you. You don't have to open up that box and do a you know, configuration of the BIOS, configuration of Windows. They're gonna take care of all those settings for you so that as soon as you take it out of the box, it's just ready to go. So if you ever find yourself in need of some new hardware, be sure to check out what the guys over at Solidbox have to offer. They will definitely take care of you. All right, so with that, let's get into today's challenge. I'm gonna start the clock and we're gonna see how quickly we can come up with the design for this football. This is kind of like a toy football. It doesn't have the actual stitching here in this area. You know, normally this would be actual stitching and this football would be in four separate pieces, but this is more of like a plastic molded toy football that we're challenging you to create. Now, anytime I'm challenging myself to create a new 3D model, the first thing I'm going to look for is where should the origin be located? What should the very first sketch look like? And what should the very first feature look like? Beyond that, I'm going to kind of unbuild the model in my head so that I can come up with a basic game plan. And the things that I'm really looking for are things like center line symmetry. If the model is symmetric in one direction or in two directions, that's going to help me to locate my origin because my origin is almost certainly going to be at the center. That's going to help me later on in the design with doing things like mirroring the model or mirroring certain features within the model. And it just makes it easier to lock down your sketches when the origin is in the middle and everything is centered about that origin. So in the case of this model, I think I now have a pretty good location for my origin. And in this view here, that origin is going to be right here, right at the center of the model. Now, the next thing I need to decide on is what is my first sketch going to look like? And I think in the case of this model, what I'm going to do is create what's called a revolve. And that means that I'm going to start out with a center line going right through the middle of the model, right through where my origin is. And then I'm going to create a shape that looks something like this, kind of like the outside perimeter of this front view. So I'll be using this 11.6 dimension, the 6.7 dimension, and this radius 6.25 dimension to create that sketch. Then I'm going to take that entire sketch and I'm going to do what's called a revolve, which means kind of like a lathe. I'm going to spin it about that center line that I sketched here. And that should give me the basic football shape. Now, after I have that shape in place, it's going to be time to move on to these kind of uh, stitched area, this little stitched area up top. And it looks like what the print is telling me is that that entire area is supposed to exist 0.15 inches above the main curve of the football, this main curve here. So that's going to let me use an extrude command called offset from surface to accomplish that. Uh, there's certainly other ways to skin this cat. We could uh, maybe do like an offset surface and do an extrude up to surface, but I don't think that's going to be necessary with this type of geometry. So the dimensions that I'll be using at that point will be dimensions like this 0.25 for the width of the stitching and the 1.25 for the overall length of the stitching in this direction. And then the six uh, by, uh, let's see here, six by, it looks like it's over on this view actually, six by 0.5 inches for that main shape. In fact, I might choose to get in here and create this main shape like so. 
so that I can actually create simpler geometry. Maybe I'll just make that extrusion first. Just take that kind of rectangular shape uh, from this, you know, from the front view, it'll look something like this, and then extrude that up, offset from surface, and then afterwards, I'll go back in and start creating these stitches. Finally, since these stitches are equally spaced, I think it makes sense to maybe just do this as a pattern. So I could just create one of those and then pattern it over in this direction, and maybe even pattern it over in this direction as well, all in one command. So I know that I've already burned off three minutes and 35 seconds of my timer here just by coming up with a game plan. But I think it's important to take that time to try to come up with that game plan so that you know you sort of understand where you're gonna be starting and where you're gonna be going with the design once you get into the actual software. So here we are in SOLIDWORKS 2020 SP5, one of my favorite builds of SOLIDWORKS. And from here, I'm gonna choose new, and then I'm gonna choose a template that is configured for inches. So I've got my template here. In this case, this one's not only configured for inches, but it's also configured for ABS, which is the material that's called out on the title block. So having those templates pre-configured can really save you a lot of time in the engineering world. Now I'm going to go to the front plane, begin a sketch, and I'm just going to start out by sketching a center line. I don't really know how long the center line needs to be. I know it needs to be more than 11.6, so I'll just kind of drop in something like so. And then once I create that center line, I'm going to start at, I'm going to flip over to the line command and I'm going to begin sketching a line. Now I'm just going to come up from the bottom here, sketch a line to this point and then come back and touch the end point and then come out with an arc of 0.625. So I'm using the auto dimension functionality to get that arc in there with a radius of 0.625. Now we can see that I'm back in the line command. Well, what I'm gonna do here is just kinda come back and touch the end point again, and then come around with another arc. Now I don't know what the radius of this arc is supposed to be. It's not called out on the print specifically. So I'll just kinda bring this arc around come back, touch the end point, come back here like so, and then come across and touch this line here. Now at this point, I'm gonna to have to put in a couple of sketch relationships. So I'm gonna put in a relationship here between this point, hold control and the center line, let go of control and make those coincident. I'm gonna pick this arc, hold control and pick this arc here, let go of control and make those equal so that the two arcs are both 0.625. And then I'm gonna take this arc here, this larger arc and find its center point hold control and pick the origin, let go of control and make those vertical. That way that arc is perfectly centered about the origin and my entire model is perfectly centered about the origin. Uh, I can get rid of this extra line here. I really only created that line to help me out in the beginning by going uh, line, arc, line. And then finally, I'll just make one more relationship here. Take this point, hold control, pick the center line, let go of control, and make that coincident. Like I said, there's always more than one way to create something in SolidWorks, so you might have a more elegant way to create this sketch, but I'm just kind of doing it on the fly here, and this is what I came up with. I created one final line here to kind of close off the model, and now I'm ready to add in some final dimensions. This is going to have a total dimension here of 11.6. And this is gonna have a dimension from the center line. I'm, I'm picking the center line here, not the solid line. The center line to this arc, and I'm gonna hold the shift key while I pick this arc. So to this arc here, I'm gonna hold the shift key. And that way I get a dimension to the tangency point of the arc. And then I'm gonna cross over the center line to enter in my dimension of 6.7. So I didn't have to hold any keys or anything. All I had to do was start with the dimension up here and just move my mouse down below the center line to get that doubled dimension. Let me just do that again, just so you can see it. I pick the center line, I hold shift, I pick the arc, and then I'm gonna be above the center line. That gives me the radius below the center line, gives me the diameter. So that's what I want. We want that to be 6.7. And look at that, that sketch is fully defined and ready to revolve. So I'm gonna go to features and I'm gonna choose revolve. And there we go, that gives us our beginning of our football shape. Maybe I'll change the color of this, so I'll click Edit Appearance just to change the color a little bit. And then maybe I'll make this a little bit of a darker orange or a darker brown color. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Sometimes real view looks really cool, but I think in this case it actually will show a little bit better if I turn it off. So I'm going into real view here and just turning that off. 
All right, so now we're ready for the second part of our plan, that first kind of stitching that's going across the top. So select a plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, and S key, center point rectangle, pick the origin. And now we really see how, you know, being uh, making good decisions for the location of our origin can pay off. Because now I can just use my auto dimensioning and type in 0.5 by six inches, and that gives me a nice fully defined sketch to give me this shape here of that main stitching so that nice six inches by 0 0.5 inches was accomplished in just a few clicks using that origin as our center point to kind of line everything up so now we're going to go to the extrude command and when we go to the extrude command we're going to choose the option for offset from surface with an offset value of 0 0.15 we'll pick this surface here and if we roll around to the front, we can see it's offsetting in the incorrect direction. So we're going to say reverse offset. And there we go. That gives us exactly what we were hoping for. That nice stitching offset to 0.15 above the curved surface. So our plan is really coming together here. Let's go to the top plane again, begin a sketch, orient our view. And now we're going to finish up this design by just creating one of these stitches here. We're just going to make one of these. We'll do an offset again, uh, 0.15 offset above that top surface. And then what we'll do is a linear pattern in this direction and in this direction to create the remaining instances of that stitching. Now, one thing we'll notice here is that the, the typical spacing is 0.75, and that's off of center. So our first instance of this is going to use 0.375 as an offset distance. And then the remaining instances are gonna use that 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25 to give us one inch total for the spacing in our linear pattern. So we're just kind of taking note of that now and we're gonna use that in just a moment when we, when we create these features. So here we go, we're gonna to go to our top plane, begin a sketch, orient our view. We're gonna go into our rectangle command. We're gonna make a rectangle here at a width of 1.5 and then a thickness here of 0.25. We'll add, a lot of times I'll just add a point. I'll use the point command up here and just add a point right at the midpoint. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to then pick one, hold control, pick the other, let go of control and make those horizontal. And then from there, what I can do is I can add in that dimension that we talked about earlier, which is going to be 0 0.75 over 2 or 0 0.375. Now we're ready to do our extrude command. So we jump into the extrude command. And once we get in here, we're going to once again choose the option offset from surface. This is going to be our surface here. Our offset is going to be 0 0.15. And we might need to click reverse offset so that that goes in the correct direction. Nice. That looks pretty good. And so now we're ready to jump into our linear pattern command. And the feature that we're going to pattern is going to be this stitching here, just this one single instance of the stitching. The problem is we don't really have a good direction for that pattern. And so to, to establish that direction, a little, little trick you can use here is we can go back to that revolve command and we can right mouse button and show the sketch of the revolve. Now check this out. Now we have a direction for direction one. So we can say we want that spacing to be one inch and we will reverse the direction of that. So there we go. That looks looks okay. Uh, it's kind of weird that it's just floating in space. Let's see what happens if we hit the green check mark. Ah, so after we hit the green check mark, the preview did update or not the preview, the feature did update to give us the results we were hoping for. Let's see what the options are down here in preview. So when we go down here to the uh, lower section of this uh, of this um, property manager. Let me zoom in so you guys can see it. I know you can't see it in the overlay there. You can see that you've got this option for partial preview or full preview. And so if we change that option for full preview, then we see, okay, now it's showing what the patterned feature is going to look like when it uses the same end condition as the original feature, which was offset from surface. That's pretty cool. Partial preview just kind of shows it going straight over. So let's go back up here to our direction one and our direction two. And for direction two, we're going to say that the direction two is going to be this. It can be the same line here. Uh, we're going to reverse the direction of that. And that's going to go one inch. And it's going to have a total instances of, 
Let's see here. I'm just kind of pressing the up button here and looking at the preview. So it's going to have a total instance of four instances. Now, if I make that 1.1, you can see kind of something interesting happening here. By default, when you create a pattern in Direction 2, you're making a pattern of a pattern. You're taking the entire pattern of Direction 1, and then you're patterning it in Direction 2. So you get these kind of doubled instances. So to avoid that, you can say pattern seed only. That means just take this feature and pattern it. Don't take this feature and the pattern that was created in direction one. So pattern seed only is what we want in this case. We want that to be one inch. We hit the green check mark, the geometry updates, and that is looking pretty good. We could do a hide command here to hide uh, the, uh, the original sketch. We could take that lacing that's going up the middle and the uh, first instance of the side lacing and the linear pattern. I'm holding control and picking all three of those. And then we could maybe do a edit appearance command and change the color of that to white, just because I think it looks cool. And wow, yeah, that's looking pretty good. That looks just like our 2D print. So let's take a look at our evaluate mass properties. And we can see that we came up with a mass here of 8.94 pounds, 8.94. Let's go back to the video and we can pause the video. Looks like it took me about 13 minutes and 52 seconds. And then if I go to the very end of the video here, we can see that the correct answer was 8.94 pounds. Yeah, we did it. And so then maybe what I would do is I would go down here into the comments and I would enter a comment saying it took me 13 minutes and 54 seconds, uh, but I got it right. Or and I got it right. Something like that. And that is how we could take a 2D print and turn it into a pretty nice 3D model. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and I'll see everybody in the next tutorial video.